Okay, so I've been breeding some Pokemon for a while, and I had a whole bunch of eggs. So we were doing a little bit of the Masuda method there, and uh, this is the last egg that I currently have with me. So hopefully it'll be something good. Hopefully it'll be the right nature, and uh, potentially 6 IV. Yes! All right, we got ourselves a Frigibax. It looks like it's shiny. That's super cool. You can tell it's shiny because of the little pink onto it there, so... I'm gonna call this Frigibax... Peppermint. Because it kind of reminds me of a peppermint. All right, let's take a look here at our peppermint. Check summary. Okay, Terra type is ice. Okay, that's fine. I was kind of hoping it would just be dragon, but we're going to change it anyways later. Thermal exchange. And it looks like it's adamant. All right. I wonder what the IVs are. Okay, so we actually got ourselves a 6 IV shiny Frigibax. Let's go! But how can we actually train this so that way it is ready for competitive play? Alright guys, every Pokemon has 6 stat categories. There is HP, Attack, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense, and last but not least, there is speed. And with this guide, I'm going to show you the fundamentals on how to properly effort value your Pokemon so that way you too can have powerful Pokemon for competitive play or for high level rates. Be sure to pay attention to this video so that way you are aware of all of your options and so that way your questions don't go unanswered. Two things that I would like to get out of the way before we actually jump into this tutorial. One, Pokerust is not available in Scarlet and Violet. And as well, if you auto battle your Pokemon with wild Pokemon, those effort value points will not be collected. Now, I know what you're thinking. What are EVs? Well, effort values are referred to as EVs for short. In fact, every Pokemon will receive one or multiple effort values after a Pokemon has been either caught or a wild Pokemon has been defeated. In fact, each individual Pokemon actually specializes in one effort value. For example, let's say you're at Poco Path at the very beginning of Scarlet and Violet. You find yourself encountering a wild Lechonk, okay? Now, wild Lechonk, it's not really that intimidating. However, it does serve a purpose. If you battle and defeat Lechonk, or you capture Lechonk, that Pokemon will actually provide you with one effort value point in HP. Now, to better understand what I just said, EVs are equal to an increase of one stat as your Pokemon reaches level 100. Now, if you repeat this process that you did with one Lechonk to get one HP value point, and you do this for three more Lechonk, you will have a total of four HP effort value points. When you think about effort values, you really need to think about it like being a math equation. Unfortunately, we are playing a video game, but this is the best method on how to properly train your Pokemon. When you ev train your Pokemon, each Pokemon can have a total of 510 effort values total which means you won't be able to go over 510 effort value points. Each specific stat can only have a maximum of 252. So if I effort value in attack 252 effort value points, I will not be able to add any further evs into the attack stat. If I train in speed, I will only be able to have a maximum of 252 evs. If you add the attack and the speed together, it equals 504 effort value points. Then that allows us to place the remainder values in another stat. By placing 
252 effort values in one particular stat, it will max that stat category. If you combine a beneficial nature to the stat, it boosts it that much further. But we'll talk about natures in my Pokemon breeding guide. With these guides, you will be able to create competitive Pokemon that potentially can become unstoppable. Kind of like a Paldean combat Tauros, going for curse and then terrestrializing to the ghost type. Right, Retro Knight? What's up? Also, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it because I do put a lot of time and effort in my videos, and I always strive to make sure that I bring you guys the best content that I can. All right, so let's talk about resetting effort values. Let's say you travel through Paldea, Kitakami, and Blueberry Academy, but all your favorite Pokemon were in your party. All of their effort values are all mix-matched in different stat categories, which don't really benefit the Pokemon for competitive play. Well, there's a way to fix that. The solution to resetting effort values begins with berries. Each berry is capable of bringing an effort value point down by 10 points. Now the nice thing is, is the Pokemon has provided us a way to drop these stats faster. So let's say you have 200 effort values in attack, and you use a berry to reset that effort value. It will remove 100 effort values and leave you with 100 still in attack. Every berry you use after that would be removing 10 effort values. To lower a full 200 stats, you will have to use 11 berries in total. These are the following berries to lower your effort value stats. First up, we have the Palm Egg Berry, which drops HP. The Kelpsy Berry, which drops your attack stat. The Qualit Berry, which drops your defense. The Hondu Berry, for special attack. The Greppa Berry, for special defense. And then, of course, we have, last but not least, the Tomato Berry, which actually will drop your speed. But where can you find these EV decreasing berries? Well, you can find these berries in raids, or you can buy them at the auction house. But the easiest process to find these berries is actually to ride your mount Pokemon and pick up these berries off the ground. I'm sure you noticed by now that when you're actually out on route or in the wild areas, that you'll eventually come across these sparkling areas or these sparkling items that are on the ground. Now I'm not talking about Pokeballs or I'm not talking about TMs, but there's a little sparkle that will actually be on the ground or in water uh, and you can actually interact with these items by pressing A to pick up the item. Now if you fly to Artisan, there are two specific areas that I would like to point out. They are located between Lavincia and Artisan. There is a location in the East Province, and then there's a location in Area 2 where you jump over a river or cross a bridge. All six of these berries are actually in these areas. In Area 1, you're going to be able to locate the Qualit Berry, the Greppa Berry, and the Tomato Berry. If you head out on an adventure by walking, running, or mounting being the fastest, you'll want to keep an eye out for the sparkles on the ground. Interact with them, and you will likely find one of these berries. Now, when you make the jump over the river to East Province Area 2, the berries you can find are different. They will be the palm egg, the kelpsy, and the hondu berry. Continue the process to look for sparkly spots in the grass, and you can find berries ranging from 1 to 10 in total. One entire stack of 10 can almost reduce an entire stat. Remember, 11 total berries are required to reset one effort value stat to zero. To find these berries, as you can see, does not take very much effort, but patience to find. The best part is, this is available very early on in the game, and you can collect these berries as you go. However, if you're in a time crunch or impatient like me, you may want to go into your system clock on your Nintendo Switch and set yourself a day ahead, then reload the game. 
This will respawn all the items back on the routes. So what are the methods of effort value training? The first method is to use vitamins to raise your effort values. You can find vitamins scattered throughout your journey in Paldea, but you can also purchase them with your money or league points from the Chansey Supply Shop. To find the Chansey Supply Shop, what you're going to want to do is head to either Mesagoza or to another city or town. Open up your map app and then zoom all the way into the town you should be able to see what shops are available. Once you locate the text Chansey Supply Shop, you're gonna to wanna to head to that specific location. You will know when you find the Chansey Supply Shop. It will be a green store and it'll have a picture of a Chansey around. Once you access the shop, you're gonna to wanna to select General Goods. The items that you're going to be looking for are HP Up, which will increase your HP stat, Protein for Attack, Iron for Defense, Calcium for special attack, Zinc for special defense, and Carbos for speed. Please note that if you do not see the vitamins in the Chansey Supply Shop, you may have to progress your storyline a little bit further in order to unlock these items. Each of these vitamins will increase a Pokemon stat or effort value points by 10. So in order to max a stat, you would need 26 vitamins for that specific stat. You're going to need a total of 53 vitamins to reach 504 effort values. The last six can be placed in other stats. If you add up how much vitamins cost, you can start to see that this method can become expensive, especially if you train many other Pokemon this way. To put it in perspective, 10,000 Poke Dollars or League Points will provide you one vitamin. Eventually, it would cost you 530,000 Poke Dollars or League Points to buy all of the vitamins you need to raise the stats for one Pokemon to a total of 510 effort values. I don't know guys, but that seems like an awful lot of money. So now that we've already covered the Chansey Supply Shop and collecting all of your vitamins in order to effort value your Pokemon, what happens if you don't have any money or don't have any league points? Uh, and that is actually where we are going to be talking about a new mechanic that was introduced during the Teal Mask DLC expansion for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And that is called Ogre Ousting. Now, Ogre Ousting is a new mechanic which takes place in the land of Kitakami. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to open up your map, fly to Kitakami, and you're going to go to the Kitakami Hall. There is where you can actually opt in to doing what's known as Ogre Ousting. So when you start Ogre Ousting, your task here is to collect berries from four different colored balloons and return them to the respected colored baskets. However, as you progress, various Pokemon will come and try to eat these berries, requiring you to have to return to scare them off by roaring with your mounted Pokemon. So when you do Ogre Ousting, there are three different uh, difficulty modes. And in each mode, you're provided more stages that you have to go through in order to complete the set. So for easy mode, there are three stages. So you basically have to go out, collect all of your berries, fill your basket, and you're gonna repeat this approximately three times. In normal mode, there are six stages. And in hard mode, there are 10 stages. Now, let's say you're having a bit of difficulty with hard mode. I mean, 10 stages, that's a lot of stages. And there's gonna be plenty of Pokemon trying to steal all your berries. Well, you can actually try to make this a little bit easier on yourself by playing with other players. However, even though other players can provide you an advantage, uh, it's going to increase the amount of balloons you need to collect. So let's say you have two players playing with you. There's about times 1.6 balloons. Three players is times 1.8. And four players, there's two times the amount of balloons that you'll have to collect in order to complete your set. Now, if you decide to play with other players, uh, there's two options for you. One is a local connection, which allows you to play with someone that's sitting in the room with you. Or if you decide to play with a friend that's further away over the internet, uh, you'll basically have to give them a link code in order to connect. Upon completion of the Ogre Ousting tasks, you will be presented with rewards. Now these rewards are kind of similar to how you would have it in a Terra Raid, but the items range anywhere from effort valuing, uh, decreasing berries, 
feathers, terra shards, nature mints, and most important to this DLC, uh, mochi. Now, there are several different kinds of mochi. We have health mochi, which can actually increase plus 10 HP in effort values. We have the muscle mochi, which is for attack. The resist mochi, which is for defense. We have the genius mochi, which is for special attack. We have the clever mochi, which is 10 special defense. And of course, we also have the swift mochi, which is for speed. Now, there is one more mochi that is actually available, and this is probably the most important mochi that you're gonna wanna seek out. And this is called the fresh start mochi. Now, this mochi will actually reset all effort values in all stats to zero. That's right, zero. So this is actually quite helpful when you wanna reset a Pokemon back to the base stats and then retrain them in the proper effort values you want to have for competitive play. Now there is a cheaper alternative to raising your effort values for your Pokemon, and that is to pick up a certain item via swimming in Casaroya Lake. Now if you guessed feathers, you are correct. Now, mind you, you can also find these items at the auction house, but that does cost you some money. So, if you fly to Casaroya Lake and hop on your mounted Pokemon, so Coridon or Maridon, uh, you begin surfing in the water to find the same shiny spots uh, as you did in the beginning of this tutorial. So these shiny spots will actually look like they're hovering over the water. So if you actually go and interact with them, you have the potential of picking up one of six different feathers. So the first feather is known as the health feather, and that provides one HP effort value. There's the muscle feather, which provides attack, the resist feather for defense, genius feather for special attack, clever for special defense, and then of course there is the swift feather for speed. While this sounds like a great method, remember based on the effort value the feathers provide, to max one stat, you're gonna need about 252 feathers, which is 510 feathers total. Now, this is gonna take you a lot longer time to collect, and you will probably require um, to time jump your Nintendo Switch console as mentioned above. Okay, so if you're following along so far and you think you have maxed out one of your stats of a Pokemon, open your Pokemon summary page and go to the party. Once you're inside the party, click the L button, and if you check the stat you think you maxed, there will be a sparkly animation next to the stat category on the graph. Another way to determine if your Pokemon has been fully EV trained, you can fly or travel to Lavincia. There you will find a lady with her Luxio, which will check your Pokemon's values. If this character sees your Pokemon, and it has a max stat, they will let you know and they will reward you with what's known as the Effort Ribbon. This is a badge that your Pokemon can wear with pride, and as it enters battle, it will be called Baxcalibur, the once well-trained. Now let's say you don't have any money for vitamins, you decide that you do not enjoy ogre ousting, and you know, you really don't want to search for 510 feathers in Castle Royal Lake. Well, there's one last method that you can use to ev train your Pokemon. If you guessed battling wild Pokemon, you are correct. Every time you battle a wild Pokemon, those Pokemon actually provide you with effort values to train your Pokemon in. The same thing also occurs when you actually throw a Pokeball and catch a wild Pokemon. The effort values are still transferred over uh, to the Pokemon that were in the match or in your party. Now, since you can't turn off the experience share in this generation, this can actually play to your advantage and let you train an entire team rather than just one Pokemon at a time. When you catch or defeat a wild Pokemon, that Pokemon provides you one effort value in a particular stat. For example, let's take Lechonk. Lechonk can provide you one HP stat. So in order to max your HP stat, you would need to battle Lechonk 252 times. Now, that's a lot of Lechonk. However, the Pokemon Company has provided you early access to effort value training items right from Mesagoza. This allows the hardcore EV trainers to begin training almost as soon as their adventure begins. The items that I'm referring to are called power items, and they can be found at a shop called Delibird Presents. 
If you fly to Mesagoza or to another town or city and you open up your map, you're gonna check your map for a shop called Delibird Presents. Make sure you travel to that location. And if you're not sure if you've found the right place, it's basically going to be kind of like a red and white shop with Delibird on every piece of advertisement. When you access the shop, you're gonna to go to the general goods and then you're gonna look for the following items. Now there are six items in total. There is the power weight, which is going to provide you plus eight effort values in HP. There's the power bracer, which is gonna give you plus eight in attack. The power belt, which is gonna provide plus eight in defense. There is the power lens, which will provide plus eight in special attack. The power band, which is for special defense. And then of course, last but not least, there is the power anklet, which is of course for speed. When this item is attached to a Pokemon and you battle the Pokemon for an effort value in that particular stat, you receive plus eight and an additional plus one for defeating or catching the Pokemon, providing you nine effort values in total. Now for all six of these items, it will cost you a total of 60,000 Poke Dollars or League Points. I would suggest that what you do is you pick up six of each item. That way you can bring a full team to effort value at one time, basically allowing you to cut down the amount of time it's going to take to train your Pokemon. Now, mind you, when you do this, this is gonna set you back about 360,000 Poke Dollars or League Points if you decide to train multiple Pokemon at once using the power items. Now, the best method to train multiple Pokemon at once, you're gonna find one Pokemon that is so overpowered that you're not gonna really worry about ruining the effort values for, and you're gonna put that in the first slot of your party. From there, the remainder slots, you're gonna fill up with Pokemon that are gonna be F trained in the same stat category uh, as each other. So for example, we're gonna choose HP. All five Pokemon, you're gonna be effort valuing in HP. You're gonna be adding the power weight to them. So you're gonna get them to hold the power weight. From there, you're gonna go into battle, send out your lead Pokemon that is overpowered. You're gonna take out all of the Pokemon you need and that is gonna boost up the effort values of the entire team that you have, meaning that it's going to affect all five of those Pokemon with the power items. So if we get back to our Lechonk encounter, remember, you get one effort value in HP, but if you have the power weight being held by a Pokemon, you actually receive eight effort value points plus one effort value point in HP, meaning a total of nine HP effort value points. Now, the nice thing about those power items is that you're not gonna have to battle 252 Lechonk. In this situation, you're only gonna end up having to battle 28 of them instead. Now, remember, once you max out your stats to 510, you don't have to worry about any other battles affecting your progress in your effort values. Now, let's say you make a mistake and you accidentally over effort value a Pokemon in a particular stat. Remember, there's no mistakes here. You can easily correct it by using a berry or by using mochi. When training your Pokemon for effort values, you need to know which Pokemon provide you what effort values in a particular stat. And of course, you need to know exactly where to locate them. Now, I have assembled an easy list in order for you to go through and find the Pokemon that you need for a particular stat. Majority of these Pokemon can actually be found on Poco Path all the way through to Los Platos and up before the gates to Mesagoza. Now, if you're looking for Pokemon that can provide you effort values in HP, you're looking for Lechonk, Paldean Wooper, or Azuril. For the attack stat of effort values, you're gonna look for Flamigos. They're gonna provide you with plus two effort values. For defense, you're looking for Pokemon of Scatterbug or Tarantula. For special attack effort values, you're gonna find Pokemon of Psyduck, Houndour, or Ghastly. For special defense, you're gonna wanna look for Hoppips. And for the speed stat, you're gonna be looking for either Buizel, Fido, Fletchling, or Palmy. Effort value training is only just the beginning to understanding how to create competitive Pokemon. If you check out the Pokemon breeding guide that I have up on the channel, we focus on breeding for natures, IVs, and eggs. Hopefully you guys got the most out of this tutorial. I know it's a lot of information and this entire process can be really confusing for new trainers. Um, but if this tutorial actually helped you out there, make sure you go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you guys and how your progress is on learning how to F train. 
And if you guys need any help, feel free to reach out at any time. Just post in the comments, hey, Corey, I need some help. And uh, I'll definitely respond there to you. Or, you know, if you want to get some help or get some items traded to you or, you know, anything along those lines, you guys can hit me up on the link in the description below for my Discord. That is my Snowpoint Temple Pokemon community. We've been around since 2010. So if you guys need any help with learning how to battle, uh, you guys want to trade, you guys just want to talk Pokemon, hop on over to the Discord and uh, fire up some conversations. All right, guys, take care, have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.